Hey everybody, welcome back to the Key to an Online Paddle School. We are back here on YouTube and this week our paddle tip is talking about sizing up your outrigger canoe paddle. In this week's video, we are going to try and find the proper length for your paddle based on your height, limb length, and what kind of a boat you're paddling in. This video is going to go in depth explaining the exact reasoning for specific lengths in proportion to you. When purchasing a paddle, you will likely run into a sizing guide based strictly on your height. This is a very catch-all way of informing most people how to get a paddle within a few inches of what they probably need. But there is a lot more to it, and I want to spend this entire video breaking down the specifics in sizing your paddle perfectly for what you want to use it for. The first aspect that we're going to break down is going to be your limb lengths in proportion to your overall height. One of my favorite videos on sizing your outrigger blade comes from the Kealoa's YouTube channel where they are seated and they reach their hand up and use that as a guide to get the measurement. This is a great video describing limb lengths and showing it in action and it negates your overall height and it addresses your limb lengths. I will link that video here in the description. The limb lengths that we are most interested in as we approach seated paddle sports is from the waist up and our arm span. It is common to see people sizing their outrigger canoe paddle while they are standing, but as you stand, the thing that you are measuring most is your leg length. As we are in the seated position, your leg length has a very minimal role on how you operate a paddle with your upper body. As I am seated here, my height from the chair up is not directly influenced by my legs. My legs could be very short, or they could be very long and I would still be the same height while I am seated. My arm span is now going to influence how I wield a paddle. If somebody has very short arms, right, their full arm extension would get them here. And if somebody has very long arms, right, their ability to command a longer paddle is much greater. So if you stand and measure your paddle to your chest, this gets you a relative size to your overall height, but it does not address your limb lengths. Your torso length and arm span will vary tremendously no matter what your overall height is. I have sat next to paddlers that are six inches taller than me, but five of those inches come from having longer legs. So when we're seated, we are about the same height. They have very short arm spans for their height, and I have a long arm span in proportion to my height. So the paddle that I would use in relation to what they would use may be similar despite being six foot tall versus my five foot six. On the flip side, I have met paddlers that are a little shorter than me, but as they sit, they sit taller than I do and have an even greater wingspan, but they have very short legs. In the world of paddling, having long torsos and long arms is excellent in the seated position. The general guide talked about in that Kilo video is to simply place your paddle next to your waist and then to reach your hand up and you would want to pick an arbitrary place on your hand to size your paddle. So here, this paddle ends up in the middle of my palm, and this would be an ideal length for the boat. There are a few more aspects that go into this, but for a general guide, this will get you within 95% of the measurement that you are looking for within all your boats. Looking at limb lengths, if I had a shorter arm, right, now my palm is going to rest here with a fully outstretched arm. Or if my torso was smaller and I was lower down, right, you could see how even being the same height, if my limb lengths are slightly different, I'm not gonna reach this paddle. So in most contexts, seated, reaching up, having the paddle in the middle of the palm is gonna give you exactly what you want. If you're in an OC6, that would be up by the knuckles about an inch or two longer. The reason the paddle should be longer in the OC6 as opposed to a one-man or two-man canoe is because the boat sits much higher off of the water. That is the next thing that we're gonna discuss here is identifying how high your boat sits off of the water and using that in relation to your torso and arm length to dial in specific paddles. The most technical way to go about this is to literally measure from your sit bones to the waterline in various boats. The easy guide is the OC6 sits the highest, one inch lower would be an OC1, and then one inch lower would be the OC2. Most OC2s are going to seat you a little bit lower inside the boat to help with stability having a second passenger within the boat. Ultimately, your longest paddle should be within the OC6, and your shortest paddle should be something that you use in an OC2 like the Kaiwa Gemini. I'll briefly talk about how I size my steering blade as we get towards the end of this video. So far, we've talked about torso and arm length, the distance that you sit from the water, and the next thing that we're going to talk about is how your 
overall technique plays an influence on how long your paddle should be based on your overall preferences with movement. At the K2NOnlinePaddleSchool.com, we teach this in a very specific way, and I'm going to go briefly into some of the mechanical movements that we go through. When setting up the stroke and initiating the catch, I want to be in very specific positions, and I am very critical of making sure that my top hand is at about eye level as the entire blade is in the water. The placement of my hands is going to be about 90 degrees if I put my blade on the top of my head like so. So this gives me pretty good leverage with my arms. Going from boat to boat, prioritizing having this top hand in good position as the whole blade is in the water. If my top hand is too low, it means that I can get away with a slightly longer paddle to bring my top hand up. If my top hand is too high above my head, it means that I would want to shorten my paddle. So I am, again, very specifically top hand about eye level as the entire blade is in the water, universal from each boat. What's going to change from boat to boat is how high you are off the water. Being that further inch away in a higher seated position means the water is lower. So as you go through that stroke, it's very easy to have your top hand too low in that position. Depending on how you paddle, if you are prioritizing your body movement first and your arm position last, you may need a much longer paddle if you're used to having your arm way overhead as the blade goes into the water. From a mechanical advantage standpoint, that is not the best way to paddle. Having your hand over your head makes it very hard to get your body weight on top of that arm. Having your hand in front of you means that you are in control of this paddle, and as you lean on this paddle, you can get a little bit more weight on it and utilize that top hand pressure from your body weight. We talk about this in great detail on the K2NOnlinePaddleSchool.com. We got 55 videos on outrigger canoe technique, starting with foundational, developmental, and mastery series, so you can progress through understanding these movements and putting them together to maximize your efficiency on the water. The next thing that is gonna influence this position of having the top hand at about eye level as the entire blade in the water is going to be the blade's length itself. The best way to go about having multiple paddles is to size one type of paddle for the craft that you want, and then having one that is an inch longer for the OC6, having one that is an inch shorter for the OC2, and using that as a spectrum to move around. Changing brands and changing blade lengths and shapes is going to overall change the length of the paddle as well. Most OC1 and OC6 paddles are going to be a very similar length, so you're only looking at about a half inch difference from one style to the next. Looking at the long Tahitian blade and some of the shorter ones like the heart attack, there might be multiple inch differences. One of the most extreme ways to show this is with my Kiloa steering blade, it is about two inches. This is a 50 inch long paddle, right? And so you can see that this blade is much longer. When we hold these paddles at the offset here, you can see that my hippo stick now has a longer shaft. So as I'm setting up to put this blade into the water entirely, my top hand would end up higher with the hippo stick and it would end up lower with the long bladed Kialoa. Bear in mind the overall length of the Kialoa is much greater, but as I'm commencing the stroke, each time it is going to end up feeling like a longer paddle. Because the blade is so much longer, it is added to the overall length of the paddle, but you have to submerge this blade much deeper. This, in effect, makes the shaft itself much shorter. The longer the blade, the lower your top hand is going to end up. So to counter this, you want the paddle's overall length to be longer. One more time, this paddle is two inches longer, but when I'm burying the blade with all the specifications the exact same, the hippo stick would be two inches longer. So that is a four inch swing between a very long blade and a shorter blade. And if we look at the paddle at the bottom, it is about a four inch difference within the blade itself. This is what makes long style blades so powerful through the mid stroke is having all parameters the same. The paddle will end up being longer. The blade will be much deeper in the water when you are in the same exact position as a shorter blade. So the amount of force and leverage that you're getting having the blade much deeper in the water is exponentially higher. So balancing out these different blade sizes and shapes for the distances that you want to paddle is very complicated. We have another video about choosing your outrigger canoe paddle and understanding these shapes that will give you more information to put all these pieces together to make an informed decision on your next paddle purchase. So we have torso length, arm length, the distance that you are seated from the water, and your technique and movement overall influence on the length of the paddle. 
The blade length is going to change the overall length as well. And this can get infinitely complex, right? Dialing in a paddle that is exactly the length that you want can take a ton of trial and error. To make the process much easier, I actually have an adjustable length outrigger canoe paddle with a plastic blade. And so overall, I can change the length in very small increments and find exactly what I'm looking for. Many paddlers do not have the luxury of having an adjustable or the availability of an adjustable paddle to use. Rough sizing guides of reaching up over the paddle become very helpful. Again, this is gonna dial in the majority of the length that you're gonna need to be successful. And over a long period of time, you can begin dialing in a quarter inch shorter, a quarter inch longer, a slightly longer blade, and a lot of these factors and put together exactly what you're looking for in your tool. Ultimately, everybody is gonna be different. No matter if you are similar height to somebody else, your torso length and arm length is gonna be more important. The type of boat that you're paddling, if they're different, heights off of the water is gonna be an influence, and how you paddle is gonna be another influence on the overall length paddle being slightly different. It can be very complicated, and I hope this video kind of surmises some tactics in understanding these lengths that you're looking for and how to achieve them. There's a few more points I wanna go over quickly about the paddle. When talking about the hand placement and the distance between the top hand and the bottom hand, I simply put my arm over my head like so, and I make a 90 degree with both arms here, and this gives me within a few millimeters the distance that I'm looking for for hand spacing. The more precise way to properly hold the paddle in proportion to your height is to take one clavicle to the other clavicle of the shoulder width and double that length. For me, the distance between elbow to elbow as I have my arms up here is about double my shoulder wingspan. So if you have very naturally close shoulders, then your hand placement will be slightly closer. If your shoulders are a little bit more broad, your hand placement will be a little bit wider apart. Getting super exact takes this measurement, a pretty close one for most people, again, hands on the head, 90 degrees on each side, like so. When sizing your OC6 steering blade, this one is a personal preference and we'll briefly go over it here in this video on what I'm looking for and the reasonings behind it. If there is enough interest, I will make an entire video about different steering blades and their effect on the canoe and how you can manage them yourself. So I have two steering blades here, right? My mirror pond is about an inch shorter than the uh, Kialoa Haivaiki. And again, with that super long blade, when we put them up side by side at the offset, you can see that this mirror pond is almost three or four inches longer with the shaft. For myself, I don't mind my top hand being slightly higher while steering in an OC6 if it has a very small blade. When the blade is overwhelmingly large, I want my top hand inherently much lower in order to protect my body. The amount of force that you can find on this paddle is almost unimaginable. And having your body disjointed and in crazy positions, your top hand being way over your head is going to feel exponentially more than having that top hand very close to you. A great way to understand how strong our body is as our limbs are a little bit closer to us is if I was carrying a 50 pound weight at my chest. This isn't gonna feel so heavy because I have so many leverage advantages as I have it close to my center of gravity. Taking a 50 pound weight and having it one-handed extended away is going to feel 10 times heavier being further from us and being under load from smaller muscles. So holding 50 pounds over your head with one hand is much harder than it would be having that hand closer to you. So having this hand at a very specific position close to me or even lower than I would in an OC1, an OC2, or paddling in the OC6 helps take pressure off of this top arm as you go for big maneuvers such as draw strokes or posting. There is no reason to go for a draw stroke with your arm overhead and this entire blade buried deep into the water. This is a recipe for disaster. Having this lower protects this shoulder as you go for those more aggressive steering motions. Again, paddling at different angles and different leverages is gonna have a huge role on how tired your body gets. Being a little bit shorter with the shaft goes a long way in helping with managing that fatigue and ongoing injury. With the mirror pond being about the same size blade as a typical OC1, OC2, or OC6 paddling paddle, the proportions are gonna be almost identical to that because I'm using this mostly for forward strokes and when you go for draw strokes, the blade's not so long, there's not as much pressure and the hand can be very strong in this position because there's not so much weight on the paddle because of its length. That entire anecdote circles back to how you are paddling with your forward strokes in the one, the two, and the six. 
Going slightly shorter gives you a little bit more of a leverage advantage to protect your joint, but the overall force that you can produce will be inherently less. Having a longer paddle means that you have the potential for greater leverage. But for many, this becomes diminishing returns, being tired and having a very large paddle that you have to wield even as you begin getting exhausted now plays a role against you. The popularity in smaller blades making paddlers go faster is the majority of paddlers are not strong enough to wield a full size blade in a length that is an inch or two longer than their proportions dictate. By making this blade half as large, paddlers will have immediate success because they do not have that physicality to use a full size blade. Changing the length of the paddle goes a long way in matching up exactly to what your limb lengths need and this large blade doesn't feel so unruly being the right length. If you have any questions about paddles, choosing paddles, navigating blade sizes, please check out our other video. Please leave comments in this one asking questions. If there's more information that you would like to see in a future video, let us know and we will get that out to you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today and we will see you guys next week for another paddle tip.